Oh, first of all, I just want to give all honors to God. Thankful for the opportunity to be here. Shout out to the Cleveland Browns. So, again, you had to show off that speed a little bit today on, the, on a couple of deep balls. The, I mean, what, what's that connection like with Deshaun on those? Connection was elite today, man. Just grateful for the opportunity. Deshaun is electric. You see that arm? He got, he got God's arm for sure. We, we were trying to decide on that last one. Were you in? Did you get the feet in? What did the ref say? I don't know. I didn't see. Yeah. Hey, see I right just now. seen the ref doing this, so I think I was in. There you go. Hey, Marquise, Marquise you're over 30 years old now. How much speed have you lost since your prime as an athlete? Uh, I think I'm pretty much in my prime, so I don't think I lost any speed. It's kind of like fine wine. You just get better with time. How do you do that? Taking care of my body, uh, doing little things, spending time with my family, uh, being intentional with my time and my habits. And, um, you know, it's, it's definitely working out. Got another opportunity to play football this year. I'm blessed. What are some of the little things you think have helped you kind of be able to maintain your speed and some of your strengths and improve on them even as you get older? Uh, strengths or things that I've felt that have helped me maintain my speed, training in the offseason. Uh, going hard on the track. I'm a track and field athlete, 2012 Olympian, for people who don't know. Um, so that's a huge background of mine. I love spending time on the track. In the offseason, I volunteer with the uh, Texas track team. I volunteer coach. So I spend a lot of time out there. How do you look at this as an opportunity with an, with a new team? Uh, another opportunity just to stack some wins, man. Build a culture here that is about winning and uh, create a change. You know, after making the playoffs a few years ago, uh, just, you know, headed right back on the way up. So just trying to do my part, do my job. What did you run at uh, in the Olympics? When you were long jump. That's my specialty event. For anybody that doesn't know what long jump is, you basically take a sprint all the way, about 45 meters to the board. You can't jump over the board. It has to be behind the board. You jump as far as you can. It's measured from your furthest point back to the front of the board. And what was your best? 27 feet, 9 inches, 8.45 meters. How, Marquise, How what was that? your... What was developing your connection with Deshaun? What has that been like so far for you? And, and what's that process like for you as a receiver, getting to work with a new quarterback and kind of learn each other's tendencies? It's really humbling uh, to work with somebody as elite as Deshaun. I don't really have to guess or wonder if he, is he gonna throw it far enough? Is he gonna throw it? You know, it's, I look in the air and I'm like, dang, I gotta run. So uh, when you have somebody who is as dedicated and as focused and, um, as experienced as he is, elite, it just makes my job easier. All I have to do is run. Kind of off that, Marquise, what is the biggest thing about those deep balls? Is it known where, like, when Watson releases it, like, what is the biggest thing that you guys need to get on the same page just strictly on the deep passes? Running. Just running. And making the play, catching. Yeah. Just being at the right place at the right time and making the catch. That's the most important part that I feel like people lose sight on. Yeah, I can run a route. I can do whatever. I can make the DB fall. But if I drop the ball, it was for no reason. So, got to catch the ball. How much was the Deshaun factor impacting your decision to come here? Huge factor. I mean, we have the same agent. I've thrown with him before. Uh, I just haven't been a free agent at the time and at the right time to be able to try to mesh it up and play with him. So, this worked out. I mean, it was a great opportunity. It, it, couldn't, be, it couldn't be any better. Does it seem like 11 years have passed since you were an Olympian? <laughs> Nah, that's crazy to think. Yeah, it has been 11 years. Dang, you aging me, man. <laughs> <laughs> did, did so it doesn't seem like that much time has passed? It, it doesn't really. I mean, because I'm always in season. I go from football to track, track to football. Even since I've been in the NFL, my first three or four years, I was crossing between the two. And then 2016 or 2015 and 16, I did as well. And then 2020, so... It's kind of like I get lost in time. Did, did Deshaun do any recruiting to get, to get you here? He didn't have to. His, you know, his talent and his leadership, it speaks for itself. So I'm, you see these chills? <laughs> you can't fake energy, right? No. That's real talk. So, so going back to the long jump, you know, we talk, when we talk to track guys, it's always like the 100, the 200, the sprinters. But mm -hmm. how does that kind of help your speed that you have to, I mean, like you said, you got to build up that speed and then make the jump. How does that help you kind of help your speed, I guess? So I want you to run and jump at half speed, see how far you go, then run and jump at full speed. You have to be fast to jump far. And it correlates by me being able to put my foot down hard and break off of a route. At long jump, I'm running full speed, and I have to transition and put my foot down. So I'm training these muscles the same way. 
the start and stop, and which is huge in football. Marquise, to like kind of maintain both of these sports the way you have and excel, you know, at football and still doing your track stuff. Like, what about you as a person? Like, I mean, it takes a special person to be able to do that. So, what about you has allowed you to, you know, kind of maintain both those sports the way you have? <sighs> Thank you for asking. I got a sister who has never walked a day in her life. She was born with cerebral palsy. I am 10 months older than she is, and that's my motivation. If I'd be doing her a disservice if I were to not go and maximize in my sport ability. Like if I'm not out running and if I'm not out jumping, if I'm not out catching footballs and I'm just sitting around being lazy or complaining, then I'm doing her a disservice. I, one, a quick story, I woke up one day in the middle of the night, probably 3.34 in the morning, and I just hear somebody in the room. And I just, I go, I go around the corner, I'm listening, and my sister's like, God, just please, please. And I just hear her saying, please, please. I'm like, what? She's like, please just let me feel what it feels like to walk. I just want my feet to touch the ground. You hear that? You ain't gonna be motivated? Come on. What is your sister's name? Deja, D-E-J-A. When did that happen? That was in probably middle school. I was in middle school at the time. And over the course of time, I've heard it a couple years. And so when I got drafted by the Bills, I, my third year, she came and lived with me. So did my brother. My brother helped take care of her. And uh, I, one day I picked her up to walk in front of the mirror. And she was like, no, I was showing her a picture on my phone. I'm like, who is this? She was like, that's mama. And I'm like, no, who is this? It was a picture of her. She didn't know. And I'm like, how you not know who this is? And she's like, I don't know. So I, she was like, I don't see myself. She don't see herself in the mirror. She can't walk. I bought a big ass mirror, put it up and I picked her up and I'm just weeping. I'm bawling because my sister is at the time like 25 and had never seen herself in the mirror. You know what I'm saying? So it adds perspective for me. I have no excuses. I'm humbled to be here. I'm just super grateful. What's your brother's name, too? Is it just the Ricky. No, no, I'm the oldest of 12. Ricky, R-I-C-K-E-Y. Oldest of 12? Yeah. How, how's, how old is the youngest? 13, Journey. That's my baby. She like my daughter. Marquise, at what point when you were young did you realize that you had the capability of being super fast? racing in the neighborhood, just racing people, grown people, whoever wanted to race for money. I was very motivated by that because I grew up in an impoverished neighborhood, so you throw some dollars out, we're going to get it. I'm going to win it. Um, and that's just always been a part of my hustle. How early in your life did you start doing that? I was seven when I started racing, and then I got into organized sports when I turned nine. Been running and playing football ever since. What was the last time you uh, did a long jump? Did a long jump. I think my celebration last year versus the L.A. Chargers. Huh. So did you win the state championship in high school? I have the high school national record. And are we going to make this our last one? You've got your own motivation, um, but you know, you've got the coaches out here talking you through things. What is it like to have that? How impactful can that be to your game when they're out there holding you guys accountable? You it's always great to have a coach, somebody you can lean on, somebody that is not afraid to help you grow. And I think it's essential in sports because a lot of people have egos and we feel like we've arrived sometimes. So a coach kind of helps facilitate you being or keeping you hungry. And I love it. Shout out to CO. At least initially, how much of a difference is it for you guys as, as defensive backs in mm -hmm. gym system compared to what you've been running with, with Joe? Yeah, it's a, it's a little different, a little different systems, but uh, similarities within the Saints. So just learned a new playbook right now and uh, getting a hold of that. But uh, definitely have its differences, uh, but definitely also got the similarities, though. Denzel, how different is sports during practice than maybe what you experienced at Joe Woods? There's things that I think we see as individuals watching practice mm -hmm. that seem a little different. Yeah, I don't want to compare and contrast too much, but uh, – he, he's a great coach. Uh, look, I'm looking forward to um, learning his system some more and uh, continuing to run it and uh, running up against the offense uh, with his system, though. So looking forward to it. What's it like when you guys are out there and you're hearing him, you know, holding you guys accountable, getting mm -hmm. you guys fired up? What's that like as a player out there? Yeah, that's good. That's what we need. We need to uh, be coached up, 
uh, whether that's in a hard way or not. I mean, it's good, good criticism. Uh, just got guys got to be out here knowing what they're supposed to do and doing our job, and uh, he's making sure that he's holding us to that standard. And so I know it's just a couple plays in OTAs, but I did see you in the slot a little with Craig mm -hmm. and MJ on the yeah. outside. Could we expect maybe a little more slot out of you? This oh year? yeah, yeah, oh yeah. So you definitely expect me uh, inside, outside, wherever. So uh, just trying to be anywhere I can to make plays and help this team out. What's that like to have? Like obviously with MJ having the great year that he did, with mm -hmm. how good Greg is, and obviously you to have the three of you and really be able to. Blankets and guys yeah. out there. Yeah, that's huge. Just guys having the versatility to play different uh, positions, uh, whether that's corner nickel or safety, and uh, just being able to move guys around, uh, create matchups uh, against the offense. I think uh, it'll be helpful for us uh, this year. What does Juan Thornhill bring to the secondary? Uh, versatility. I mean, he's able to play the post. He's able to come down uh, into the box or uh, in cover. So uh, he brings that uh, versatility, uh, leadership to the scene. So when you see the the additions that have been made. Mm -hmm. Darius Smith, Obo to go along with Miles, yep. Calvin in the middle. I mean, how excited does that make you from that? Game? Yeah, it's very exciting. Uh, but at the end of the day, we all got to do our job. So we got to make sure that uh, we're helping those guys up up front and uh, locking our guys down on the back end. So, I mean, we work together, but uh, definitely excited about those guys on the front and uh, looking forward to getting everybody together and uh, competing and going against offenses. Denzel, um, why did you guys go down to uh, Puerto Rico uh, mm -hmm. you know, with some of the offensive guys yep. and sort of what did you get out of that trip? Yeah, it was uh, just to build camaraderie, just a, a time to get away a little bit. Uh, the rookies and everything were here, so we we're just trying to just uh, continue to build that relationship with the team and uh, just have a good time, get away. Still do a little football out there, but still just have a good time, like I said. Dan, so you mentioned that you'll be close up, close hard. Do you think that was maybe lacking during last year? Say that again? I said you mentioned it's good to be close hard sometimes in it during that. Do you think that was lacking last season? Uh, no, I don't think it was um, that was lacking last year. I mean, coaches got on last year the same way they did this year. Uh, but like I said, it's a good thing to have, have that criticism or have that uh, opportunity to be coached up and uh, know what you're supposed to do. There were some communication breakdowns last year, Denzel, and we asked Juan about that because it's hard to say, hey, here's a new guy fix all these communication right. problems with safety. But is that something you guys have even talked about or is that in the past or moving forward? Uh, yeah, we talked about it, but I think uh, with this new system that Coach is bringing in, uh, it's kind of take out all those if ands and uh, kind of those questionings. Uh, so you pretty much you know what you're doing and you just go and do it. You don't have to uh, read too much out there. Would you say that's the biggest difference? I know you want to compare and contrast, yeah. but is that one of the biggest difference between last year and this year? Is last year there were a lot of checks, a lot of things. This year it's you're doing your job. This is what mm -hmm. you do. Yeah, I would say so. Denzel, I saw you in the inside quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be a more of that uh, the season goes on? Yeah, you can definitely see that. Uh, so I may be inside, outside, safety. So wherever I can to be to uh, make a play and help this team out. This stage of your career, you, you enjoy that? Like kind of expanding your horizon? Like yeah, I just want to I just want to be out there on the field and best play to make a play. Uh, that's what I'm trying. My focus is uh, locking my man down and out there to make plays. So wherever I'm at, I'm cool. Do you like the idea of maybe possibly following a guy around all game, like Jamar Chase or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like I said, I'm, I'm here to I'm here to help this team win. So wherever the coach got planned, lined up for me, I'm ready to uh, take it on. And so Jim Schwartz has said that he likes to stand in the middle of the field, and part of the reason is he likes you guys to feel his presence. Um, do you get that out of him? Do you feel this kind of guy looking over everything you guys do? Yeah, I do, and uh, I like that. Uh, it keeps us on our toes and uh, focuses on our assignment and our job and what we're supposed to do. Guys don't want to be out there uh, messing up and get screened that are called out on, but uh, so it just kind of gets you to lock in and uh, do your job. I don't know if you've been matched up in front with Marquise, but we were talking to him today, and he's so fast. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you see him run yeah. around on the field, what do you think? Yeah, he's a, he's a burner. He's a fast guy, a guy that could take the top off defenses. So uh, looking forward to going against him some more and uh, just getting better. About uh, D-Hop, would he be a welcome addition to this team? And how good is he? And what would he add if mm -hmm. you bring him in? Oh, yeah, no question. I mean, you guys see the resume that uh, D-Hop has in this league. Uh, he's a premier receiver. And um, I mean, we will definitely welcome him with open arms if he were to come here. But um, yeah, so if he comes, cool. But we're going to uh, continue to take a day at time and do what we're supposed to do, get better, and get ready for the season. Denzel, good, good one is like 33 years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you saw him on the field and the speed, did it surprise you at all? I know he was a former Olympian. Mm -hmm. Is it surprising at that age? Yeah, I, I didn't even know he was 33. So for you to say that, yeah, he, he's fast still for, uh, for that age. But, um, yeah, he's a burner.